on the Kurotogas are very consistent, which I think is a good thing oh, okay. because, because no matter what Kurotoga product you're using, I think that you get a consistent experience with it. And when I do a video on this one, I will compare it to my Kurotoga pipe side and I will uh, compare it to my standard Kurotoga um, because there's something to like about all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, I like this one because of the wonderful metal body construction of the whole thing. It's metal even up here, you know, which is nice. And it's not too heavy as metal pencils go as well. And that's another thing that's attracting me to the roulette as well. And I think that the knurling on the grip is a great compromise. And so I'm excited to, to review this one on the channel because I think that it's, it's going to be something that viewers are going to be interested in hearing cool. about. And so time to get some, to some Orenzas. Yes. I was just talking to Frank about this, and this has been something that's been a discussion on the channel for quite some time, that the, the uh, Pentel just came out with the Orenz Nero, which is a injection molded plastic pencil. It's expensive. It's like in the $30, $40 range. Yeah, it's and, <laughs> and, and And there's a, there's a secondary market for it. There's like a scalper market or something for it. I, I kid you not. You go to Japanese, you go to eBay in Japan, and people will be selling them for $100 equivalent, $100 USD equivalent. They probably haven't caught up with the manufacturing yet. Right. Because I wondered why we hadn't gotten ours yet. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. It, it, and if I can make it a, a comparison to another Japanese industry, the video game industry, the Nintendo NES Classic that came out, they had a very... And, some people would argue Nintendo tends to love to do this, that they will, that some people hypothesize that they deliberately do small production runs to drive demand. Japanese and, companies definitely do that. Okay. <laughs> Stationary companies definitely do that. They did that with the, the, um, the, what was it? 200 series that we just had? Was it the P200 series? Yeah. The the limited edition, yeah. the sharp series, that, yeah. They they wanted to restrict the amount that that vendors have, uh -huh. and they only did one run. Ah. So you know it's they they do that on purpose. Well, you you know you know that I collect limited edition sharps, and so um, that does not surprise me because people like their limited edition sharps. Yeah. And I got I it. The Kinati was going to be limited edition, but it, it totally is. They're still producing that yes, thing, huh? For well, years now. Yeah. if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. Is my perspective. But then again, I don't. I don't own, you know, a major writing utensil company like Pentel. And so we're going to try out the Arens Grip, which is the silicone rubber. Uh, version of the Arends, and this one is in point three in orange. And I was just talking to Frank. Now, okay, so back to the Nero then. So the the Nero, the idea behind it is that the Nero is an auto advance Arends, mm -hmm. which these mechanisms come in a wide variety. You have retractable sleeves, which are just designed for the lead sleeve to go up and down into the pencil so you don't stab yourself. And then you'll also get a sliding sleeve, which is what a classic Orenz is. Mm -hmm. These sliding sleeve pencils are designed to, I guess people are annoyed that they have to click. Yeah, you, you, <laughs> you, click, you, know? you, you click once every so often. <laughs> and, and this is why in, in our in a future in our future interview maybe sometime later today I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you about your impressions about the I'm hopeless <laughs> I'm hopeless and, uh, so I, I'm gonna ask you in our interview a little bit about that because I have this question about like what is driving the Japanese aesthetic to the market you know oh, yeah. um, and so the sliding sleeve for the Arends is is that and then going back to the Nero the Nero an auto feed mechanism is it may slide but you'll also get the lead gradually extended so that you can just continue to write and write and write and write and even if the sleeve slides you're still going to be able to write with it so theoretically you could go through an entire stick of lead and never click the button. That must be why. Have you seen the video where they put it in one of those, it's like a spirograph machine or something? Mm, and right. They, they just set it free for a long time. I was talking, right, and, and I was talking to, to Frank about how they clearly put a lot of money into that marketing campaign for that because they did a very professional video for it. Yes. Where the, the quintessential 
precise Japanese office worker. And I think that they were portraying them as an architect or a drafts person or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, and, and what I was... I think they might have even done a series of videos. R- sure, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> and so I had viewed a lot of videos, and regretfully I do not speak Japanese, and so I was watching, and... Uh, you know, you love it. You get the pen or pencil twirlers on those videos, and it, because writing, you know, and I wish I could do that. You know, I, I, that's one of my life goals is to is to learn to become a writing utensil twirler. But I am the clumsy clumsiest person, and so I jury's still out. Okay, on that one. So um, the Nero is something that I'm very interested in, but it's not something that I bid on because one it's difficult to get here in the states because it just came out in japan and it's a risk Mm -hmm. like that's like 40 bucks that like what if you don't like it right you know and so for the person who does not have unlimited funds yeah to to do my hobby you know it's like what what are you going to do for those sorts of things um so here we have two arenzas that i've had my eye on for i i have a 0.2 millimeter version of the classic arenz which the classic Arends is an all injection molded plastic Arends. But the Arends is a popular mechanical pencil because, correct me if I'm wrong, Kimberly, but these are designed for the fine line that is needed for writing kanji characters. Is that correct? Yes. And, and I would go so far also to say if, you, um, if you're reading something with complicated kanji, you want to write next to the kanji sometimes uh, furigana. It's called furigana. When it, and that's basically using um, the Japanese hiragana alphabet to um, give your phonetic sounds to the kanji. Mm. So I would... So sometimes you're like not only writing these super fine kanji characters, but you're even writing even finer characters next to the kanji. <laughs> Hmm. And, that, and, and that's what's called furigana. But that, that gets kind of like far down the, the rabbit hole of learning Japanese. And I think a lot of people are just fascinated by this concept of like a really thin lead size too. And so the, the Ren's metal grip that I'm going to try out here is in 0.3 millimeter as well. And you notice that I only did a single click there because the Pentella Ren's is designed as this sliding sleeve retracts to just need the minimum amount of lead that is necessary in order to get the experience. And And so this is... I say as hard of a presser as you are. I I am. I don't mean that as a presser. It's shocking to me that there's a a point through pencil that you can write with and it's not break. And and that's the idea behind the Arends that Mm -hmm. that since the entire piece of lead is encased within the lead sleeve that is cushioning it and preventing it from yeah. from being an issue. Um, I'm glad that I tried it out because the the Arends metal grip is an example one. I think that this is going to appeal to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't appeal to me personally. Mm-hmm. I, I'm actually surprised because I did not expect to like the silicone rubber grip at all, mm-hmm. but I love it. It's a little, it's Thicker than it, it is, and, and I'm not a thick grip person, so it's like that. It surprised me, which, which is a good thing because it's so difficult to get a writing utensil, especially a finely crafted one like the Arends, and with a great pocket clip and a really great eraser. I mean, look at all the eraser you get on that, which is awesome. Um, but this is just Pentel functionality. They're like, what, what, is, what, are, what are users going to like? And so Pentel Arends in the rubberized silicone grip is, is surprisingly, surprisingly, I, I really like it a lot. Um, yeah, I really like a very fine mechanical pencil. And when the, the Pentel Arends first came out in point two, mm. and it was like really exciting. <laughs> right? I, until that time, I only had as fine as point three. And, and the only drawback, I think, of the point two is that that lead is niche, mm-hmm. and and but I mean that just means that you have to patronize your small business right, a little right. bit more to get <laughs> those. To get so yeah, you got to come back in order to get it. Um, and so yeah, so so Pentel Arends. I'm glad that I got an opportunity to try it, and um, the silicone rubber grip really surprised me. And so um, are are we at the end of our line here? I think. Oh so. wait. We have, um, uh, did you already talk about? I I didn't. Talk about 
I'm going to save that one, I okay. think, for later. Okay. Okay. But what I really... Uh, I would love for you to instruct me about what you know about fountain pens. Because okay. that's an example of, an, of a, a market, so to speak, that I've... Sorry about the camera shake there. That a market that I've really been interested in getting into. Um, and... I know that you can go crazy expensive, and I know that you can go very cheap. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I what, would, um, I guess I could give you a little bit of tips about begin, how to begin, uh -huh. or what I would, what I would recommend. And isn't, beginning. isn't there a famous, very not highly priced oh, yeah. fountain pen that is available? Oh, look, what's that? <laughs> Are you leading me into that? I am leading you into that. I don't know. Did so, you, were you interested in red? This is kind of I am interested okay, in red. Okay. Yes. For, for correcting. So, so here we go, folks. I know that yeah. this is a mechanical pencil channel, but, uh, you know, I'm doing this for me. I'm not doing it entirely for you. Don't take that personally, <laughs> okay? But, but as a, as a um, teacher, I need to mark stuff. In the, the Canadians call it marking, the British call it marking, Australians call it marking. We would say grade stuff, okay? But there's this interesting thing in education about the idea behind the red pen. I don't know if you've heard this, that there's research that has come out about should we be using red pens because we are going to scar their little minds with the red pens and red is associated with stop in our culture. Red is associated with, you know, anger. There are a lot of teachers who would use uh huh, and, and and I like green. I find it really interesting as a teacher because I'm of the opinion that what you write is way more important than what color you write it in. So I can imagine a teacher writing in green saying really mean, unconstructive things, and then a teacher writing in red saying really constructive, you know, things. But red shows up on a page, you know. And so tell me a little bit about the platinum preppy. And I got to get it started here a little bit, right? In order to oh, get yeah. it to Did go. You pop the oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. see, <laughs> I need your help. Okay, okay. so should I unscrew? Should or? Unscrew. Yeah, so okay. the nice thing about the Platinum Preppy is it's very inexpensive. Oh, look, there it pen. is. Look, here it is. I think it's um, like $3.30 or something like Which that. Which way does it go? Quite cheap. Um, where the ball is, is where you'll pop it. Okay, because the ball is going to mix the ink, um, kind of. Yes. Okay, so so the, the <clears throat> that's all I do, right? Yes. Now, a lot of times you'll just need to let gravity uh, do its thing. It often will start writing immediately, mm -hmm. but generally pretty quickly you can get it to start writing. And um, what's really nice about the Platinum Preppy is that it's it's the nicest, cheapest pen that a lot of fountain pen users can find that is reusable. Um, I know Pilot makes a disposable fountain pen they call the Varsity, I believe, but it's kind of a one-time use thing. Hmm. Um, it doesn't take cartridges. Cap says the, the line thickness, which is nice. Yeah, so that's considered a fine, which is 0.3 or 0.3. And this is a, like, so another thing that's cool about the Preppy that I've heard from people is that it is a multi-directional nib, so you don't have to be, you can hold it upside yeah, down and a, still write with yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You know? Although, see, that's the kind of thing that's going to get you comments on your channel. <laughs> Come at me, bro. What you going to do? I screen all my comments on Clutch Situation. You're I'm just still, reminding everybody. I'm just reminding everybody in the audience that that's a thing. We're trying to keep it light here, folks, and so, so there it is. So, what else? What else can you teach me then about ink cartridges and and different varieties well, and? Well, because they come in wells too, don't they? Yeah. So you start with the cartridges because that's going to be. Can we feature some things? Run back to the warehouse. Oh, no, 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 right, just, just these, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. just start out. So these so, are the platinum cartridges. Yeah, so they come in, in the two packs or the ten packs. Um, 
Now, if, as you get advanced with your fountain pen usage, you can do things like use a converter so that you can use any kind of ink. I am interested in converters. Yeah. That was another thing that I wanted to ask you about. And, you know, I guess the biggest thing that is surprising me right now that I never expected is that that little ball inside the cartridge is in there to sort of mix your ink for you. And for a cheap fountain pen like the Preppy, I would never... And maybe I should have expected, but I would never have expected anybody to go, I should have expected the Japanese to go to the trouble of like having that little mixing ball inside of the cartridges. Oh, yeah. So the, I just think that this that's an immediately enough, cool... Like this is, um, th now this is a pilot converter. That's right. not going to work in your prep, mm -hmm. but just for the sake of being able to grab something. So basically, if you... Um, the next step above you doing cartridges would be to get a converter and then that way you can get whatever beautiful whatever like beautiful loose ink you found that you like then you're not limited to the colors that come in the cartridges Look how pretty it is the the label is even textured folks it's textured yeah it's a very pretty ball it looks like perfume to me. right don't yeah. spray that on you <laughs> So and so this one you, you can suck see it they up. have the mixing balls in there. Yeah, okay. this one does a spiral. Some of them are squeeze, mm -hmm. and some of them are twist okay. style. Um, but again, you know, like Pilot's converters are proprietary. So if you have a Pilot pen, you really need a Pilot converter. But Platinum does make a converter. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Platinum does make a converter. Because um, I hear that the fountain pen industry fountain pen network watchers on here is pretty extensive yes understatement yes so if you <laughs> right. so if you have something like the popular kaweco fountain mm -hmm. pens, they take what's called um international standard size international standard short um like the j urban cartridges mm -hmm. a lot of people would be familiar with those um so the kind of the downside to some of the Japanese fountain pens is that they have the proprietary sizes, so it's harder to use the like European um, cartridges and converters. Hmm. I'm feeling it. I think I need to write with it for a while and sort of gauge like where do I stand on fountain yeah. pens. You know? Now, some some people um, will turn their platinum preppy into a. Um, a, oh, what do they call yeah, it? Yeah, what do they call where they fill up this whole reservoir? Yeah, right? they use a um, silicone, is that the right word? Silicone, silicone ring. ring, yep. Yeah, they use a silicone ring and then they basically turn the entire barrel, barrel. into um, their inkwell. <laughs> Can you comment a little on if I were to compare this amount of ink in this platinum? Uh -huh preppy fountain pen to what you would get in a gel pen, which one's going to last you longer? This fountain Your pen, gel pen, gel pen is still going to last longer because that's like for a lot of people uh, with regards to ink and, and this is not a pen channel. Okay. I understand that. I get it. Okay. But um, for me, like I've tended to go towards more emulsions, which is that compromise yeah. between gel and ballpoint. Like the jet stream or the I'm a huge fan of Uni Jetstream. Okay. That's that's um, uh, uh, an ink that I really like. Um, you avoid like the gloopiness of a ballpoint pen ink, but it will last a little bit longer than a gel. Yeah, yes, for sure. And I was looking at some of the Frixion pens that you have here, and there's there's a slim over there that I'm probably going to pick uh, pick up because I'm surprised at how easy, how well the friction system works, mm -hmm. like the heat sensitive ink. And so that's yeah. like another thing that I might get into. Um, and so, okay. Yeah. It's a mechanical pencil channel, but you please don't begrudge me, you know, diversifying into fountain pens and, and other forms of things. And so is there anything else that we want to get on the, the tester video here? Cause we're almost like an hour in. And so, oh yeah. Uh, I can't think of anything. I, but but we, we answered a lot of questions and we covered a lot of ground and mm -hmm. so so it was a lot of fun and so I appreciate you you joining me on this Kimberly and and uh, hopefully we'll make a couple more videos today that I'll yeah. post to the channel and maybe we'll get a video up on Tokyo Pen Shop as well yes. um, and so yeah and so thanks for watching folks uh, and there are more videos in this Tokyo Pen Shop series to come.